In this session, we are going to be looking at setting up network access protection, but we're using the virtual private network connection method. If you would remember, in our last session, we configured network access protection using the DHCP enforcement method. We're going to be using the VPN method in our session. So the first thing that we want to do is to select the network connection method from the drop-down box. We have selected VPN. And any policies that are created will work with this network connection type only. So when you set up a VPN connection, then people accessing the network using VPN, these policies that we create will only work with those clients. If you set up a DHCP connection, then the clients are connected to that connection and you have specific policies that will work with those connections. We have the policy name. You can either leave the default name as it is here, NAPVPN, or you can type your own name. You can customize the name of the policy. We move on to the next page. On our next screen, we need a radius client which is the access server, so we need to choose one. If there are radius clients already here, if you have already configured radius clients, then you can simply add it. If you haven't, then at this point, you'll be able to create one. We already have a radius client, and we're going to be using radius client one. So all we need to do is to move to the next screen. Just as in the DHCP enforcement policy, we will need machine groups. So if you have groups created where you have placed machines in those groups, you can add the group. If you haven't and you want the policy to go to everyone, to all users, then we can go ahead and say next. So at this point, we are going to go ahead and we're going to say next for the VPN. If you remember, if you're using VPN connection, you need to configure an authentication method. And for VPN, we use PAP. And you know that if you're going to use PAP, you're going to need a certificate. This version will not, not let you move any further unless you have a certificate configured. So what you would do is to click on choose at this point, select your certificate. You can see we have our certificate selected here. And by default, you have the PAP secure password. You can also choose smart card if you wish, so you can use both of them. But please remember, if you are configuring VPN connection for use with your network access protection setup, you will need to have a MPS server certificate. I want to go to the next screen. And for this session, for this section here, for the screen, we have to select our remediation group, just like we did when we were setting up the DACP. So we have our group, we're calling our group remediation group one. And when the client tries to connect and the client is not compliant, we can have what we call a web page. And that web page will give the client directions on how to bring the device online, how to make that device compliant with your network access protection health policy. 
So you have to have a web page. If you do have one, then you will need to type the URL right here in the URL box so that the client will have access to that web page to find out what to do if the system, if his system is not compliant. We want to move on to the next screen. And we come to the window security health validator and we have a health validator by default. A health validator contains all the updates and the antivirus programs that you will need for your policy. You can create one on your own or you can use the default and you can modify that default. And we're going to be looking at the security health validator a little later. Also, you can see here that auto remediation of client computers is enabled by default. So if you don't change anything in this policy at all, the client computers that are not compliant, they're going to be forced to go into remediation. Remember the remediation group would be a group of servers and these servers would be servers like, for example, WSUS servers where the servers will force the updates on the client computer. When the client computer is updated, then the client computer will get what is called a statement of health. It will present that to the server and the client will be allowed access to the network. But only then. Our third section here on the screen, we have to deal with computers that are not able to run NAP. They are NAP ineligible. And that might be a down level um, computer, client computer, or it might be a computer that's not a Windows operating system computer. And you have to decide what you're going to do with those because you will have computers like that on your network. You have to decide here if you're going to deny them full access, only allowing them access to the restricted network. And the restricted network will be the network that contain your remediation servers, your WSUS servers. So you can choose that one or you can just allow full access to the, the computer. So you either give them limited access or you give them full access. Then you want to continue to the next screen. And you check what you have configured, make sure it's everything that you want. If it's not, then you go back and you make your corrections. So this is the completion of the NAP policy. And we have we did it with the VPN connection. We want to take a look next at that system health validator that we talked about. To take a look at the system health validator, we need to access NPS. We want to click on tools. Network Policy Server. And in the Network Policy Server console, we want to expand Network Access Protection. And we can see here System Health Validator. And we want to expand System Health Validator. And we want to click on Windows Security Health validator. Now we have two sections here. We have the setting section and then we have some error codes. Let's take a look at settings and let's note here that the system health validator settings will define 
whatever settings that you put in this system health validator or you accept that will define the requirements for client computers that are connecting to your network. If you want, you can edit the default configuration or you can create additional configurations for use with the health policy. So let's go into settings and we're now going into the default um, system health validator settings. So let's double click on default configuration. And we see here that you from these settings here, you can choose the policy settings for your Windows Security Health Validator. You have settings here that are default. They're already here. If you don't want these settings, then you can uncheck the box. So let's look at them. The first one is the firewall setting. So the client computer has to have the firewall enabled. That's, that's one thing that they need to have if you have this checked off. Then you have antivirus settings where the client computer must have an antivirus application on and the antivirus must be up to date. You have your spyware protection settings where the client computer should have the anti-spyware application on, the anti-spyware application on, and it also has to be up to date. What about automatic update settings? Let's see. That also has to be enabled. Then you have your security update settings. You can choose those. Let's turn that on. This is going to restrict access for clients that do not have all available security updates installed. And here you can specify the minimum severity level required. So you have here important and above, low and below, moderate and above, critical only. You can choose the one that you want to specify. You can also specify the minimum number of hours allowed since the client has checked for new security updates. And the place where the updates will come from. If you leave it as it is, the updates will be coming from Windows Update Services. But you may, in your environment, have a Windows Server Update Services server. So you can decide where the updates will come from. So th these are the settings for your system health validator. You can leave them as they are, or you can modify them. We want to close the settings and look at the error codes. Let's go back to the Windows Security Health Validator and take a look at error codes. Now, the System Health Validator error codes will be fine whether the client computers are considered compliant or non-compliant when the system health validator or the system health agent that we had talked about in the previous session returns an error. Let's take a look at the error codes. All right, let's look at the first one, the system health validator unable to contact required service. Now, this error can occur if network policy server loses connectivity to a health requirement server, such as an antivirus signature server. Then we have a second error code here where the agent is unable to contact required services. And this can occur if the SHA, the system health agent, is unable to successfully read the client configuration. Remember we said that the SHA is a component that will actually scrutinize the client computer to see 
if the client computer has all the requirements that are stated in the policy. We have another error code here where the agent is not responding to the client. And this error can occur if the system have agent is not properly initiated and registered. Then we have the system health validator not responding. And this error can occur if the performance of a system health validator is degraded. For example, so let's say your MPS is out of memory. You might have an error like that. Then you have another error, the vendor specific error code received. And this particular error can occur if MPS receives an error code that is unique to the system health agent or system health validator vendor itself. Some vendors might return this code when MPS is unable to contact a health requirement server. So those are our error codes. And we looked at the system health validator, the settings. Let's just go back to it. And we saw that we have default settings and that we can modify the system health validator to suit our purposes. So you, you get to decide what is in this system health validator, the policies that would apply, and the client, when the client is trying to access the network, the client has to comply with the settings that you have here. If, if they don't, they're not going to be allowed on the network. They might be given restricted access to the remediation server, and the remediation server will then actually place the updates on the client computer, give then the server a statement of help saying that, yes, they are now compliant, and it's only then that the client will be connected to the network to access resources. In this session, we looked at NAP with a VPN connection. And we also took a look, a look at the system health validator. This is the end of our session, and I want to thank you for listening.